The whole world depends on Taiwan for semiconductors? I don't get it. They are small parts of technology made on an equally small island country. Why does everyone talk about them? What are they exactly? I know semiconductors are used in many electronic devices. I heard they are pretty small, but I'm not sure how small they are. I guess probably the size of a newborn Chihuahua dog. 我本来今年就要换新车了，结果我的业务跟我讲说，你要等一年后才可以取车。哎、欸，这太夸张了吧！全球半导体有缺货成这个样子吗 ？I'm a tech fanatic, so if there were no semiconductors today, I might feel like I'm back in time, and I can't stand how boring it would be. My science class memories are a bit blurry. I know there are conductors and insulators. Semiconductors are somewhere in the middle. I guess they control and manage the flow of electric current and devices, and that's all I know. Let me call the classmate who used to sit next to me. Such a nerdy. Hello, Chuck. It's me. How are you watching this video on a smartphone or a tablet? Maybe you're streaming it from a laptop to a TV screen or a projector. What? Of all these electronic devices, can only exist thanks to one thing: semiconductors. Their unique connectivity means scientists control electrons much easier, allowing for the concentrated creation of countless complex computers. Its discovery facilitated a full-scale technological revolution. Taiwan's National Sun Yat-sen University recently opened the College of Semiconductors and Advanced Research just to learn more about them. But how much do you know? Time to find out. This is it, ladies. The kitten whispers and tickle fights in now. Whoa! Sorry about that, gang. I got a bit carried away. There's all. I only start glitching like this when there's a problem with my microchip, which means we need to get to the bottom of these semiconductors and fast. Welcome to the show, everybody. Wow! You all sound absolutely electric this evening. I'm your host, Chuck McSilver. Let's meet today's contestants. Everyone, please welcome Stevie and Tim. This week, we're putting the back in semiconductor. Check out our semiconductor terms: microelectronics, electrons, insulator, module, fabbing, connectivity, conductor, transistor, foundry model. Contestants, it's up to you to find those words. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your first clue: any substance or material that allows electricity to pass through it. Uh, conductor. Any substance or material that does not allow electricity to pass through it. Uh, semiconductor. Ooh, that's the wrong answer. A semiconductor sometimes allows electricity through it, depending on its environment. Tim, any ideas? What do we call something that doesn't ever allow electricity to pass through? Is it an insulator? Correct the mundo. Whoa! We need to move fast. Next word, please. Device used to regulate a semiconductor's ability to allow electricity to pass through it. Transistor. Tool used to control the actions of an electrical device, similar to a machine's brain. Module. Whoa! I don't think I can wait much longer. We can help. Sure, for some points. Please, I can't stop glitching. Let's think. If Chuck's glitching like this, then he can't control his actions. Which means his module isn't getting enough electricity. If it's not getting enough electricity, then his semiconductor isn't working properly. Which means the problem must be with his, his transistor. transistor. Er, Chuck, I don't think he's coming back this time. Uh, what happens now? That's the end of the round, and it's a tie, which means uh, everyone wins. Apart from Chuck. Medals for all. So I guess I'm the host now. Uh huh. Is that how it works? Thanks to our guests, everyone gets a medal, and we'll see you next time for another episode of English with Paz. No, no, wait. 
English with Paz Bueno. See ya, stinkos. Wow. Even though I just got my medal just now, but then with Paz appearing out of nowhere and all these glitches in the system, it's really making me think that semiconductors are a lot more difficult to understand than I ever imagined. But one thing I do know, never trust that Chuck again. <laughs> Forget that guy. Hey, but I have a friend who can help us understand the situation. Come on, join me now. Hi there, I'm Tim Berge, and you're watching English with Experts. Today's topic is semiconductors, and we're going to talk about what semiconductors are and why you can't live without them. And as the pandemic has caused many businesses to decline, why have semiconductor business continued to grow? But before we continue, we would like to thank the NDC, the National Development Council, for pushing forward and facilitating the bilingual policy. Hopefully soon and dramatically, we will see an increase in the English spoken in Taiwan. It will reach far and wide. The expert with us right now is from UMC, United Microelectronics Corporation. She is the manager of corporate communications at UMC. So let's welcome Michelle Yun. Hey there. Hey Tim. How are you doing? Uh, it's good, great to be here today. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. I'm currently manager of corporate communications at UMC. Um, and prior to joining UMC, I actually worked in the media as a journalist for many years. Ooh, okay. Um, so I, I'm partially Taiwanese. So I came out to Taiwan in 2015, um, taking on a role as correspondent for AFP. And then I went on to cover um, on a freelance basis for a couple other media outlets. And before I came out to Taiwan, I was in Hong Kong um, working as a business journalist. Wow, okay. Maybe we should hire you here as a reporter, huh? I would like to be on the other side right now. <laughs> oh yeah, it would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. okay, but maybe what are semiconductors? Could you break it down a little bit to us so that even a little kid like me can understand? <laughs> sure, no problem. So it's a bigger problem than you realize, but anyways. <laughs> what we're usually referring to is computer chips, microchips, or sometimes also called integrated circuits. So you know, these computer chips are really the heart of modern society. You know, they power every single device we come into contact with. From the minute you wake up, you reach for your phone to turn off the alarm, to going to work and then working on your PC, going home, maybe turning on Netflix. So all those things are not going to be possible without semiconductors. So my life is going to fall apart tomorrow if I don't have my semiconductor. Yes, yeah, okay. you better go out and go buy some. Keep making those things, okay. So manufacturing chip, if you think about semiconductor, it's actually a very interesting, very intricate, very tiny piece of technology, but it makes so much happen. It makes the world go round, basically. I would liken a semiconductor to maybe a very, very tiny high-rise building, a skyscraper. <laughs> a very tiny skyscraper. Okay, that's a kind of a slight contradiction, but okay, I'll follow, I'll follow. So, 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 so to make a semiconductor, you start off with what looks like a mirror, a round mirror, a silicon disk. Right. And then you, you start layering material on it, and then you cut off some of the stuff you don't want, and then you add on things that you want. So it's, it's like a skyscraper because you're adding, you have a foundation, and you build layer by layer by layer. And you're doing all of this on, I, I don't even know, it's you how small it is. It's right, but so you're, you're building it taller and taller, but we're talking about very small. Very, very. Thin, terms very, very small maybe the size of your pinky fingernail oh, okay okay so, so pinky yeah. skyscrapers I'll remember that for my next semiconductor <laughs> and could the world live without semiconductors and I know the answer to that already but please tell me depends on how far back you want to go okay I don't want to go back very far <laughs> then let's I move forward okay I would say probably not okay so as you know, we said that your whole day you come into contact with all these different devices that require semiconductors. Think about your smartphone. How many chips do you think are in your smartphone right there? <laughs> One? Guess again. <laughs> a million? <laughs> Maybe not quite so much. But usually you know, when we talk about buying a smartphone today, it probably has anywhere between 100 to 200 chips. So and that's amazing if you think about it. Like how many chips can be stacked on top of each other and fit it together to fit into that tiny space? That's cell phones for you. And when we talk about cars today, largely a mechanical device back in the day. But today, you know, sometimes we call them, what do we call them? Computers on wheels. Exactly. So they, they can have upwards of thousands of chips. Yeah, I know I was, I was kicking tires on some new cars the other day. And the guy told me, you know, don't even think about it. You're gonna have to wait at least a half a year. And it's all because of the chip problem. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very far reaching problem. So why then is there this global shortage right now? So with most things, it's not just one simple answer. It was actually a perfect storm of many factors okay. conspiring together to cause this. But usually um, in the news, we read about the COVID pandemic had a lot to do with it. 
And if you think about, in, in Taiwan, we were not as tightly locked down as other places, but think about the few months we were stuck at home. You know, how did you entertain yourself? How did you work from home? How did you do your classes online? So it prompted a lot of people globally to go out and purchase a lot of appliances, maybe even PlayStations, exercise equipment. So that caused a sharp spike in the demand for semiconductors. So maybe you could tell us a bit about why does Taiwan play such an important role in the global semiconductor industry? So to ex um, answer your question, I think I need to give an explanation of what the semiconductor value chain looks like. So it doesn't just involve a chip making factory, what we call fab. It involves actually a whole lot of other players along the value chain. So you start off with um, companies that design the chips. Um, they're called IC design companies, and some of them also do manufacturing. And so these IC design companies would send their designs to fabs, and then the fabs would make the chip, and then usually it takes about three months, and then they would send it to another facility to get packaged, and then that package would go to other downstream players, eventually into yourself. So when you say packaging, does that just mean like they cut the chips into the final pieces, or what does that mean? Um, yeah, that's one of the tasks that they do. They cut it up and then they also mount it and make sure that it's, you know, it's, it's nicely protected before it can be integrated into other electronics. Okay. And when we talk about fabs, there are actually two types of companies that have fabs. So you have um, what we call foundries. They manufacture chips for other companies based on their designs. And there are other companies called IBMs and they design and manufacture their own chips. So wow. it's, a, it's a little bit complicated. It's process. a very complicated industry, right? But they're all very important. And yeah, so in the foundry space, like the, what we talked about, they manufacture chips for others. Taiwan actually has the largest market share, over 60% of the foundry market share globally. Is that something which is changing? Is Taiwan doing more of the design work now too? Or is it still doing just more of the OEM type manufacturing? Taiwan is actually very strong in IC design as well. Oh really? Okay. So we're um, Taiwan is number two after the U.S. Wow. Good and deal. packaging, we're number one globally as well. Wow. So, Pretty so, impressive. Yeah, so Taiwan is a very indispensable part of the global supply chain. Very vibrant. Yes. Okay. So with the shortage now, though, what are the challenges and what are the prospects for the Taiwan semiconductor industry moving forward? Let's start with challenges. We get the hard stuff out of the way. So I think for in Taiwan, the semiconductor players, one of their top concerns on their minds these days is talent recruitment. Um, so like UMC, you know, we are expanding capacity in order to meet increasing demand for semiconductors in the future. And of course, other Taiwan semiconductor companies are also doing the same thing. So you have competition for the same talent pool within Taiwan, amongst Taiwan players. But at the same time, because Taiwan is such an important part of a global semiconductor supply chain, a lot of other companies from the US, from Europe, are also investing in Taiwan. And they're also competing for the same talent pool. So you can imagine how much competition there is. And you know, it's going to be tricky and uh, challenging going forward for everybody to you know, find the right people in order to support the production that they need. Just now you talked about the challenges that the semiconductor industry has faced in Taiwan. But what about the prospects for the future? There must be some bright future, isn't there? Oh, the future is certainly bright. Okay. So there, there are many factors that's driving the increase of semiconductor demands for you know, the, the near, the near mid, mid and also the long term. Um, so one of the driving factors is the rollout of 5G across the world. So this new wireless technology is going to open up a whole new world that's possible um, due to higher, faster download rates, um, you know, less video lag. So when you think about VR headsets, you know, people talk about that for many years, but never really quite taken off. So with 5G, you know, a lot of applications are going to be possible. And I think you brought up a good point. It's not only that, but it's also like the other buzzword these days, IOT, Internet of Things. And so not only is it like new products that use chips, but a lot of old products that have chips now that in the past never did. And that kind of seems to be being part of the new prospect for a better future for the industry too. Yes, certainly. IoT also has been around for many years, but I don't know if you have a smart fridge in your house. I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're all kind of moving that right. way. It's slow, but yeah. it, it is happening. But I think um, the advance of technology is removing some of these barriers that have uh, prevented you know, these technologies like IoT, 5G from happening in the past. But you know, I, I think um, it's going to be very interesting to see where these trends develop. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle, for that very interesting conversation. And I'll keep in mind the uh, skyscrapers on my pinky. Good. I'll remember that whenever I think about semiconductors in the future. 
Okay, well anyways, we want to thank the NDC, the National Development Council, for giving us this opportunity. And for more of our English with Experts series of uh, videos, please check out the ICRT website at www.icrt.com.tw. And while you're there, check out the other great content we have for making English a part of your everyday life. Thanks a lot.